Hello, uh, Western uh, Civ. Um, welcome to week four. And um, you all have an exam this week. But um, you're not going to have many. And it's actually not that difficult. You're going to see that basically I'm just asking you to kind of restate briefly everything you've learned up to this point. I mean, in a nutshell, or, or to synthesize. And you can utilize even information from this week. Um, ultimately, what I'm trying to do is just get you guys, you know, as I've mentioned before, that these survey courses, we cram in so much information. And, and, and I kind of feel like I'd rather just have you revisit some main thing, like main points that will help you, um, you know, you know, stay in uh, enriched and actually you feel like you actually did learn something on top of that. Um, so um, hopefully you'll find this helpful and you're going to realize, I mean, I don't, we don't do multiple choice garbage. I don't, I don't believe in that. And maybe at some point I'll be required to, I'm not saying it's hundred percent garbage. I just, I don't know. It's not what I like to do. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, uh, anyways, a little bit stuffy in here. It's, it's, uh, I do live right now in the tropics. I'm still in Thailand and it's a very, uh, muggy, um, the rain, more, more tropic rain and all that. Um, so yeah, so, uh, in any case, um, that's really all I have to say about this week. We're, we're going to, we're going, we're covering Alexander the Great and his legacy. And I find this really to be an interesting subject matter. And I, I hope that you find it as well. I mean, I find all this interesting, but, um, I hope that you actually really enjoy this. I do wish we had it. I, you know, I thought about actually go ahead, just slipping in a discussion anyways, but I'm not going to do that. Um, this week we don't have a discussion, but. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, talk about the stuff with your friends. I mean, that's that's what makes history more interesting, right? You know, spice up the conversation. <laughs> um, okay, what else am I going to say? All right, so um, here I am. Uh, I'm posting you. I'm posting a few videos underneath on my travels to Sweden. Um, th that part I just wanted to show also is as as I, as I put in one of the titles. Um, and I didn't do these very professionally or with much skill, but uh, my great-great-grandfather with my great-great-grandmother lived in this one particular area of Sweden, and I had another a relative that was able to find the precise location of the village that my great-great-grandfather was from, and him and my great-great-grandmother left this part of Sweden and eventually lived in Turlock, California. And... Uh, many of you do know that there, there were quite a bit of um, uh, Swedish immigrants into Turlock. Um, and, of course, also different ethnic groups, but a lot of uh, Portuguese from the Azores and uh, a lot of Assyrians from Iran, the Ormia uh, area, and uh, Latinos and so forth. So it's interesting, you know, the, the issue of immigration, right? And it's kind of a head trip for me to just like go to this part of Sweden that almost all of my relatives from that branch were from up until the 20th century and they're traced back to 1776 in the Salisbury area, Blakena County. Um, and it's so small and so quiet and just, and then they, and they come here, they, they felt the need. And this was a time when it was much less comfortable. You had, you know, um, to, to do those kind of travels and more risky. And, um, and now, you know, I think I was mentioning before, the, Sweden's having this issue about immigration that's polarizing their society. And one of the, uh, the men who, who leads the uh, Swedish Democrats, kind of neo-fascist party in, in many ways, um, you know, comes from this area. You know, he, could, he could be my, my, my distant cousin, um, and uh, here I am in a, coming, you know, as a person from America because we left that area. My relatives didn't want to stay there. And um, I don't know, it's just really, my brain has been really thinking about a lot of this because this is such a big topic in the world right now, the issue of who belongs where and, and what does it mean to have identity, identity politics. That's such a big deal right now. Um, and it's tearing apart Europe in many ways, or it's got the potential to. In the United States, this is a big deal, right? 
and in other countries and um, you know here I am in Thailand uh, many of the girls in this neighborhood women that I've talked to come from the same area that are or many are part uh, Cambodian because they had to flee uh, Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge their families and ended up being integrated into Thai society and um, you know there's so many uh, people out here so many men married to Thai women with children who are now you know having all of these mixed uh, ethnic legacies right from very uh, different parts of the world um, and, uh, and oh, just to say this too by the way we'll get into this more when we talk we'll get into the middle ages I'll bring it up again uh, whites here are called farong and Farong it comes from the term Frank, one of the Germanic tribes of, uh, uh, from the area of France. And so I guess the Germanic uh, legacy uh, has been going on for a while and spread to many parts of the world, right? For good or for bad. And I don't know, you know, there's so many things here for me to contemplate. But in any case, I hope you guys are all having a, a good week, being good to each other, being good to yourselves, and we'll be in touch. And uh, hit me up if you need anything.